What would you say to having a three-gear range on any up or down shift? Depending on where your engine speed is, Daimler's DT12 automated manual transmission can give you up to two gears one way and a single gear the other way. That's even better than many manual transmissions. Hi, I'm freelance trucking journalist Jim Park. We're in Napa, California, test driving Freightliner's new 12-speed automated manual transmission, the DT12. In part two of our video test drive series, I'm going to demonstrate the difference in the DT12's economy and performance modes, and I'll show you how manual mode can give you even more of a fuel economy or performance advantage. In part one, we saw how the transmission handles the basic stuff, stopping and starting, city driving, and even a few small grades. If you haven't seen that one yet, check it out. In part three, I'll put the boots to the DT12 on Interstate 80's Hunter Hill, that's just east of Vallejo, California. I wanted to compare economy and performance modes in a real climb. We also gave the engine brake a workout on those grades and I've got a big surprise. In most automated manual transmissions, economy mode is the default setting. It's programmed to shift for fuel economy which usually means shifting at low RPM to capitalize on the engine's torque output. In the optional performance mode, the transmission will shift at a higher RPM where horsepower comes into play. It gets up and goes a little faster but the penalty of course is that fuel economy suffers. The DT12 does both econo and performance modes very well but even in economy mode, drivers can influence the shift timing by the way they use the throttle pedal. It's kind of like performance mode light. Let's take a look at the difference between economy and performance modes. Okay, I'm going to do a comparison while we're going through town here. I'm going to leave the transmission in econo mode, which is where it is now, and I'm going to do a fairly typical throttle application. We'll just compare the RPMs. So 16 into 4th, 15 into 6th. 1550 into 7th and 15 into 8. When I stop here, I'm going to switch this thing into performance mode and I'm going to do the same thing. And we'll see where the engine RPMs go. Okay, 16 into 4th, 16 into 5th, 18 into 7th. 17 into 8. So it does shift differently. It gives you a bit more RPM and it didn't skip shift as often in performance mode as it did in econo mode. So you can see how performance mode takes each gear a few hundred RPM higher. I was shifting at 16 and 1700 in performance mode as opposed to 14 and 1500 RPM in economy. Now let's see how the driver can influence the shift timing. In this clip, I was turning left away from a light, and rather than using a nice light throttle application, I just put my foot right into it. You can see by the difference in the engine RPM there too, and you, uh get a little more aggressive on the throttle pedal, it tends to take the revs a little higher and uh, get you going a bit quicker, but that's not even in the performance mode, mind you, that's still in the economy mode. So it's really up to the driver. If the uh, driver wants to do an economic upshift, uh, launch away from a traffic light, it goes really easy on the pedal, it's going to take off at a really low, really easy RPM. If you want to get going a little bit quicker, just give her a little bit more throttle and uh, it'll respond. It'll upshift at a higher RPM, which means you're, uh, you're a little bit more aggressive on the takeoff. And here's how we can put manual mode to good use. Earlier in the day, I had crested this short hill with the transmission in economy mode. We were cruising at 55 miles per hour at about 1100 RPM when I came up on the hill. The transmission downshifted to 11th gear just below 1100 RPM and then upshifted back to 12th as I broke over the crest of the hill. On my second pass over the hill, this time in manual mode, the transmission took the hill without the downshift. Here we are at uh, about 1,075 RPM, 54 miles an hour. 
we're just going down the two lane. We're coming up on a slight grade. We did this one before and it uh, initiated a downshift just going into the grade. I'm going to turn the cruise off and put this thing into manual mode and take this hill in 12th gear and manual and see how far the engine will let the, trans the transmission will let the engine lug down. So we're starting up the slate grade now. Speed's dropping a little bit, 50 miles an hour, 1,050 RPM. We're still climbing, 42 miles an hour, 1,000 RPM, 950 RPM, 45 miles per hour. And we're just above 900, so I'd say 910, 920. Still pulling strong. Don't have all the torque there. We had around 1,100, but it's still there. So in terms of fuel efficiency, uh, managing little grades like that by dropping the transmission back into manual, I'm sure the driver is going to be able to make a substantial difference in fuel consumption rather than having the thing automatically initiate a downshift on a short little hill. You can just let it pull up that hill in manual, give you money ahead. It also, I guess, gives you something to do while you're driving this thing because the darn automated transmissions just don't seem to have anything going on. It's nothing to do with your right arm. So, Rather than work the shift lever, press the button, play with it a bit, see what you can do for fuel economy. There's proof positive that a driver who's really working the truck can do a better job than the computer in some situations, even this darn smart computer. Manual mode works pretty well at launch as well. So we come to a stop, it automatically shifts to first, which we don't want. So let's go to second. Let's try third. So I'm in third gear at the light here, going to turn left, and there's a very slight upgrade to this. And we're loaded 75,000 pounds, and uh, it wants, I want it to start in third gear. Some transmissions would say, nah, I'm not going to let that happen, but here we go. Just as smooth as can be. Upshift to fourth. Make the shift to fifth. We're taking the corner in fifth gear right now. Grab another gear. And we're just off to the races. That was incredible. Third gear starting up a slight grade. An absolutely smooth launch. Just remarkable. The last example I have shows the amount of flexibility the driver has in gear choices when using the engine brake. We know the engine brake works best at higher RPM, so if you really want to ratchet up the retarding power, you need to get the revs up. The trouble is, many automated trannies won't let you shift that high. Not the DT12. Okay, we're 11th gear right now. Uh, now we're just at 12. I'm going to put her in the manual for a second. And I'm going to throw a couple of downshifts at it and see how low, how high we can get the engine to rev. So I'm going to downshift 12 to 11. Okay, 1450. 11th to 10th. We go to 13 uh, to 17 or 1800, I guess. And I'm going to give it another one. 22. So we downshifted from 12 to 9th, went from 1100 to 2200 RPM. And I had all that range of control. So if I needed some engine brake at uh, that high RPM for a quick stop or to hold me on a grade, I'd have no problem at all getting up to 2000 RPM or better for the maximum retarder output. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow! Just try a downshift like that with a manual transmission. You have to be some kind of hot shot to hit a shift like that on the first try. So that's it for economy, performance, and manual modes. It's my understanding that performance mode is an option, but all DT12s will have manual mode. You can work that all day long on roads with rolling hills, and I'd bet you'd beat the transmission on fuel efficiency if you let the engine lug down into the 900 RPM range. In part 3, we're heading out onto the big road and onto a big hill, just to see how the DT12 transmission and the DD15 engine get along in a hard pull. For today's Trucking's Ultimate Test Drive series, I'm freelance trucking journalist Jim Park, out in the vineyards of sunny Napa, California. Drive safe and keep your revs down. <laughs>